All right. Well, I have a true confession this morning. Uh, when I first read the gospel reading today, I had decided, and I even talked about this at Tech Study, that the one thing that I absolutely would not talk about was that unclean spirit. It, it makes me uncomfortable because people get into all weirdness about, you know, exorcisms and like the movie The Exorcist and heads turning around and, you know, pea soup and just, you know, it's just grossness. Just, and I don't think it's helpful to us. So, you know, I like to stay away from the unclean spirits as much as possible. But the exorcism is the center of the gospel reading. It is kind of the point of the gospel reading. And so I had to, um, <clears throat> to put my feelings aside. It is the first act of Jesus' ministry. And there is something more here than just another episode of Supernatural. Okay? Does everybody know of the cultural reference here? I hope. <clears throat> so the first thing that we have to, to understand, to realize, is when and where this story is taking place. It's on the Sabbath day, the holy day. It's in the synagogue, a holy place. And Jesus was teaching, which was the normal thing to do in the synagogue. And he was teaching with authority that they had not experienced, the people had not experienced before, not like the scribes who were the usual ones to be sitting there with the law of Moses and uh, explaining it to them. And as a result, the people were absolutely amazed by what they heard. So suddenly we have this man with an unclean spirit who was there. The man with the unclean spirit was in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He was in this holy place, in the center of Jewish life. He was not some wild man living on the outskirts of town, but someone who fit in just fine in the synagogue on the Sabbath. What do you what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? The man says. Have you come to destroy us? He says. In fact, some, uh, some scholars read this and say that these actually are the words of the scribes. Whose authority Jesus is usurping. Jesus is teaching about things and teaching in a way that is different, that is new. And it threatens those in power. It threatens their authority. And their response, have you come to destroy us? If we hear this as the words of the scribes, what then is the unclean spirit? What is it that is holding them, holding this man in bondage? Envy? Desire for power, for authority? Don't rock my boat, Jesus. I've got a good thing going here. If we think of the unclean spirit as only a demonic being that takes someone over, then, well, quite honestly, we don't need to face the unclean spirits within ourselves. We aren't forced to see the ways that we continue the power of evil in ourselves and in our communities. If we only see a demon as 
you know, an entity that's going to enter in, then we don't have to consider that there are things that keep us in bondage. Remember what Jesus said in our gospel reading last week? It was his inaugural speech. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. It's right here, people. Repent and believe in the good news. The good news is that God is present and that God loves you. Understand that. Jesus came to free us from what keeps us in bondage. It might be the way we view the world or the way that we've always done things. It might be the ways that we keep ourselves comfortable despite the fact that there are hurting people around us in a whole bunch of different ways. Sometimes what binds us is relationships. Sometimes what binds us is drugs or alcohol. But whatever binds us is something other than God. Something other than the good news that the time is right now that God is here and that God is loving us. Wake up. Change the way you view the world. See God's presence. That's the good news. Ironically, we live in a culture that is obsessed with cleanliness. You just have to go to the grocery store and walk down the soap aisle. Oh my gosh, every smell for everything that you could possibly ever want to clean. It is there. But we're living in a pandemic that is binding us all, we have to admit, that has proved us that our cleaning materials our soaps and all cannot save us because the virus is in the very air we breathe. I mean, if we think that we can keep ourselves safe on our own, then we're deluded for one thing. But then we begin to think that only other people will die. There have been many people who have died in this pandemic who thought that, and they're dead. But the real uncleanness is that of our hearts. The uncleanness that cries out, have you come to destroy us? And the answer is yes. Jesus came to destroy the things that keep us bound. The uncleanness that is inside of us. The problem is that we rarely see the things that bind us because they've just become so normal. We have made them holy. We have put them in the sacred places of our hearts. Paul says that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. These unclean spirits are those knowledges that we would be willing to die for what we think is true, even if it's not. And we will hang on to those things, even if it hurts every single person around us. What a different world we would create if we focused on what builds up instead of what puffs up. If we focused on the love of God that came into the world through Jesus Christ. If we focused on the God who is love, 
then we might see, we might really understand what authority is. And we 